Poker friends, followers, and fellow book lovers, tonight I've got a fantastic book. Um, this book, the three leadership principles or examples in this book is one that Washington, General Washington, chose a symbolic flag. A man named Dutch Sheets followed inspiration. Um, and some might even say he followed a vision or a dream. And three, what many Americans don't know is that America set a standard. And the book, well, the first section, the first section of the from the book that I want to share reads. The past can be an important anchor. Without this stabilizing force, however, America is now adrift in a sea of secular extreme experimentalism, blown about the, by the wanderings of its of our own fantasies and the delirium that they create. And I would say to you that if you're paying attention, and if you may or may not have grown up in the same era that I did, um, You've noticed a big shift in the United States and the way that people do things and even sometimes um, in the things that people believe. And I, I love I love that he just calls out right away um, early in this book that we need our past, that it's an important anchor. And really, when you're go going someplace, you need two points. You need two points, and that anchor should be our first point. And, and for many Americans, um, there is a there is an anchor point, and we we know what and who that is. Number two, though America is scared and flawed, scarred and flawed, we still possess a divine purpose. Rest assured, the Sovereign who bestowed that purpose to America knows how to resurrect it. He goes on to say that I dream of a reborn America that is once again a shining light to the rest of the world. What what some people don't want to um don't want to look at or consider is who came to America first? Who were the people? What were they like? Many of them were Christians of some kind. And so that anchor is the sovereign or the God of heaven, um, however you want to denote your faith in him. Um, I, I almost didn't include this, but I really, I really felt I should because to me it makes it very clear. Because God wants all Americans, every race and creed, to know they're part of his great plan for her. And yeah, a lot of Christian Americans— and even those that are not Christian, but believe that America has a certain destiny, um, really believe that she has a purpose, that America is a special place, a divine place. Not divine as in holy, but divinely selected, okay? Okay. Number three, I had to check my notes, number three. Uh, God doesn't see a born-again and former prostitute as a former prostitute. He doesn't see the redeemed murderer as a former murderer. God separates our sins from us as far as the east is from the west, Psalms 103, 12, and remembers them no more, Hebrews 8, 12, and 10, 17. And I really wanted to share that because one of the travesties I feel in our justice system today is that someone's forever a former convict, a former felon. Um, there's not a clear – I'll restate that. From what I know of the American prison system, there's not a clear exit strategy for somebody to come out of prison, re completely reformed, rehabilitated, which is supposed to be the purpose, and then go on to becoming a, a pathway back to full citizenship – rights now some states some states 
they don't get their full rights back. Um, and in other states, someone can become a full citizen again with all of their rights. And I think that we, we as we as Americans in some parts of our country have forgotten that that our citizens that commit a crime should have a path a path back to full citizenship. Okay. All right. This is gonna be kind of in, this is gonna be in two parts here. First, in many ways, it is the banner under which America was born. He explained. So I'm talking about a flag that existed before the Stars and Stripes. And for many people, it is the banner under which America was born. And it's the first flag that was commissioned by General Washington. And that's why the first leadership principle is that Washington chose a symbolic flag. This comes out of writings by John Locke. <clears throat> And where the body of the people or any single man is deprived of their right or is under the exercise of a power without right and have no appeal on earth, then they have a liberty to an appeal to heaven. Now, I initially heard that phrase a little differently. And that is how I heard this phrase first used was that a good man's last appeal is an appeal to heaven. And if you've not heard of the Appeal to Heaven flag, that is what it looks like. Okay? There's a, a couple of different renditions of it. And now you've seen the title of the book, An Appeal to Heaven by Dutch Sheets. Um, understand that um, that in, in 1607, that a cross was planted in Cape Henry, and I forget where that's at. I looked it up when I was reading it, um, in Cape Henry, and there was a dedicatory prayer given for this entire country, this whole this whole land. Okay, and um, that was reread at the Mayflower Compact. Okay. And John Winthrop, what, what used it in a, in one of his um um in in a, a speech he gave in 1630. So here we have Christians coming to a country, which they felt called to. Go back and read the, the writings, please. Do your own history search, or and research on that, and go back to the what the. Puritans wrote and and learn what they saw and felt in their experiences. Okay. All right. Number six. Some historians believe that due to the Iroquois influence, the eternal and covenantal evergreen was placed on the appeal to heaven flag as a symbol of our nation's covenant with God and possibly of our founders commitment to one another. This is consistent with the spirit of covenant they demonstrated by pledging our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor to one another and the cause. Certainly, the appeal to heaven phrase on the flag supports this belief that the evergreen tree is also related to our alliance with independence on God. I know there are many Americans today who don't connect the two, America and God, and that's okay. I'm not telling you what you have to do. I'm just sharing with you our Christian roots. And th this, this thing gets me ex so excited, okay? Because there's so many writings from the 1600s all the way up through the Constitution where the leaders of the colonies and the territories, I should say colonies because I think everything in the East was a colony initially. Um, they talk about their appeal to God the freedom they sought, the reason they came here, the reason they sought to come here, um, some petitioned the King of England, some came of their own, um, some came uh, as as explorers for a company, a couple of different options there, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a seventh one because I really like the way that Dutch phrased this, okay? 
he said that we're in we're in covenant with the everlasting God. Throw his weight around. Throw his weight around. Declare his favor and blessing over America. By faith, call her back to the ancient path to reap the harvest of the ages. Believe he, God, can. Believe he, God, will. Um, This is not a very big book. I read it in a, I want to say in about an hour. Um, I was on a flight recently when I, when I took up reading it um, because I knew either I'd have a good conversation with my neighbor or I would read. Um, So I came across this flag several years ago and I fell in love with it. Excuse me. And I fell in love with the idea that this flag represents because as you go back and read some of the original writings from the early leaders of the colonies, the 13 colonies here in the United States, you could see their faith in God. You can read and understand. I believe anyone can read and understand the tyranny that they felt they were under. And when you Turn on a camera, I'll start to yawn. I could do this in person and I wouldn't yawn. Um, so this right here, this flag, this book, um is, is really a call to not just Americans, but to Christians. Um, I learned through reading this book that this an appeal to heaven flag has had a resurgence since the early two thousands and has been flown all over the world. In fact, this this picture here is of this flag flying in the I think it's in Nepal or maybe I had that wrong maybe it's just in to in what was the country of Tibet I know I know but I'm not the U S I'm just a citizen so okay this book is an appeal to heaven by Dutch Sheets. I highly recommend you get it and read it. He's got a couple other books that I I hope are the same size um, that uh, I'm going to go and pick up and and read as I go through other books. So thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and share it. Um, If you want to get more information on me, if you want to get more information or connect with me, you can go to turningleafs.com that's l-e-a-f-s.com and uh thank you guys for joining me this is i will and i'm out